So, it took four months to make the Final Fantasy VI episode, but I was dealing with audio issues, personal life delays, and a really, really long game. So hopefully this one won't... Oh crap, I gotta go! This is Brand New Relic, the series where I finally play the classic games I never got to try. And if there's one type of game I definitely never got to try, it's retro PlayStation titles. And old Nintendo games. And any Xbox exclusive- basically anything that wasn't Sega. Genesis. I didn't have a Dreamcast. Anyway, one of the franchises that I missed out on the most was Metal Gear. This 35-year-old series was the brainchild of Hideo Kojima, which, in case you forgot, don't worry. He'll remind you. Yes, Kojima shepherded this franchise from its original release on the NES in 1987. Oh, wait, I'm being handed a note here. Looks like it was originally, originally released on the MSX2. Okay. Anyway, from its original release to Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain in 2015, Kojima was steering this ship until parting ways with Konami shortly after The Phantom Pain's release. Since then, there's been only one other Metal Gear game released, which, uh... Yikes. But today we're looking at the one that jumpstarted the franchise, establishing its distinct aesthetic for years to come. Metal Gear Solid. Or more accurately, tactical espionage action Metal Gear Solid. This 1998 title was one of the most popular PlayStation 1 games, outselling Crash Bandicoot, Resident Evil, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and yes, even Derby Stallion. So let's see what all the fuss is about, and let's see just how bad I'm going to be at this one. I know that this is the third Metal Gear game, and that the protagonist for most of the franchise is named Snake. I know it's a stealth game, which is why I've avoided it in the past, because, let's face it, my anxiety is already bad enough as it is. And while I haven't played a Metal Gear game, I'm not a total stranger to Hideo Kojima's work. I played through all of PT, and logged about 8 hours into Death Stranding, which was... a time. So I know that Kojima's aesthetic is, shall we say, unique? But just what am I in for? Well, you probably know, but I don't. Yet. Another season, another Konami game, another reminder of what used to be. And if it's jittery polygons, it must be PlayStation 1. Apparently they're these bad guys, and they want the US government to return the remains of their boss, who's named... Big Boss. Very original. And if they don't get those remains in 24 hours, they're going to launch a nuclear missile. So now it's up to me, a super soldier by the name of Solid Snake, to take down the mastermind behind this plot, Liquid Snake. Does that mean that there's also a gas snake? Now to get to him, I have to get through this bizarre Tarantino cast of characters. But first, I watch a series of briefing videos, and no joke, these videos are almost a half hour long in total. Man, I'm ripped. I get briefed by the colonel on pretty much everything, like who I am, which is uh, apparently a misogynist, my mission objectives, the organization I'm fighting. Hey, down in front! And I love Snake's mouth movement here. And they're talking about gene therapy. I think I knew a guy named Gene Therapy. The terrorists are going to launch a nuclear missile in 24 hours, and they said that five hours ago, so 24 minus 5. Ugh, God, I'm so bad at math. I have 12 hours to stop this thing. I also learned that the colonel's niece Meryl was captured, and I'm sorry, you just breezed past the part where she apparently had psychotherapy to keep her from being attracted to men? I'm injected with a bunch of drugs, and also some nanomachines, all without my consent, and I'm told that Liquid Snake is the twin I never knew I had. Shouldn't that be a plot twist at the end of the game? And then we get the most vitally important piece of info so far. I get a haircut. I also read about what happened in the previous two Metal Gear games, so I can be caught up on everything going on with Foxhound, which has the cutest little logo for an organization of assassins. The 21st century was expected to be one of chaos. Yeah, thank god that's not the case, huh? <laughs> so now it's time for some tutorials, and the first one is super easy. Just make it past one guard. I'm so off to a bad start. But I complete all the challenges, and... Yeah. Perfect. No notes. So now it's time to start the game proper. I make my way onto the enemy base, and I can communicate with the colonel through a codec that stimulates the small bones in my ear. How scandalous! I get my first game over, and... Snake, what happened? 
Snake! Snake! You don't need to yell, I'm right here. Oh, a Jeremy translated this. I get to see Hideo Kojima's name a few more times, and then I meet Mei Ling, who... I just didn't expect a world-class designer of military technology to be so... cute. <laughs> okay, calm down, Snake. And wait, I have 18 hours? It was 17 in the briefing room, how did I get time back? We also chat with Dr. Naomi, the one who injected me with nanomachines, and... Well, if you make it back in one piece, maybe I'll let you do a strip search on me. Okay, what is with the women in this game? I'm going to have to find a number of weapons, but I made sure to bring the single most important item in my inventory. Cigarettes. Yes, our hero openly smokes. Did you get that, kids? So I make my way further into the enemy base before reconnecting with my old drill instructor who calls in, for some reason, and... I quit being a drill instructor, so I moved out here for some peace and quiet. Uh-huh. I'm in retirement, just like you. Yeah, okay. Once in a while, I still help train the Alaskan scouts. Oh, really? I sneak my way through the ducts, make my way inside, get some more game overs, and wait, now you're telling me that smoking is hazardous? I can't even get to a ladder without being interrupted by a phone call. I'd like to talk to Solid Snack about extending his auto warranty policy. I find the DARPA chief, and it's interesting how they don't move their mouths when they talk. Just like in real life. And look at that sassy pose. A nuclear-equipped walking battle tank. End of scene? Metal Gear. Oh, wait, no. Turns out the terrorists have Metal Gear, a walking tank with the ability to fire nuclear missiles. I think you can get that at Walmart. The DARPA chief tells me very classified information, loud enough for the prisoner in the next cell to hear, and then he gives me his ID card, which opens level 1 security doors. Don't know why they didn't take that away from him when they locked him up, but mine is not to question why. Anyway, I can free the DARPA chief. That's one task down. This is gonna be easier than I... Well, that's not great. <sighs> Dead. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. I leave the cell and... I'm sorry, what now? Seems the prisoner in the next cell managed to escape. We collab on some murder, just a pixelated butthole in the background there. I chase after the soldier, get an unnecessary butt shot, and then... Good girl. Just like that. You know, I'm beginning to think this game is kind of weird. This is one of the top 10 best-selling PlayStation 1 games of all time. And in trying to figure out how to reload, I accidentally made this image, and since I had to see it, you do too. I continue sneaking and find a cardboard box that I can hide in. I wish I could use this to leave social events. And I finally get a silencer, which helps considerably with this whole stealth thing. Good night, sweet prince. Snake in China, they say. You must cross the river before you tell the crocodile he has bad bread. Do you know what that means? No, I don't know what that means, Mei Ling. Now, the DARPA chief told me that the arms tech president is hiding behind a different colored wall, so... Snake old boy, you've done it again. So I find Kenneth Baker, the guy who played R2-D2, who seems a bit jittery. And I get my first boss fight with Revolver Ocelot. We run around shooting each other for a while, and then... What? My hand! <laughs> okay, wasn't expecting any of that. You were lucky. We'll meet again! Not without that hand, you won't. So who is this mysterious figure that saved me? Sure, why not? So we saved the arms tech president, but he gave the terrorists his launch code because he can't resist torture. Dude, same. What happened to your arm? He broke it. Looks like you're more than even now. His was sliced off. Is this really the time for jokes, Snake? I can still use his card key to disarm the nuclear device, but the female soldier from earlier has it. However, I can contact her using the frequency that's on the back of the disc that he gave me. The U.S. cutting the military budget. Hilarious. Turns out Metal Gear was developed by the U.S. government as a secret project. And no one can bother you. Not even those bleeding heart liberals on the military oversight committee. Yeah, those bleeding heart liberals and their military oversight, trying to keep things like walking nuclear armed devices from getting into the hands of terrorists. Do we really have to save this guy? <laughs> Oh, I guess not. What the hell? Beautiful. So now I need to contact that soldier who has the card key, and her frequency is on the back of the CD case. But for the life of me, I can't figure out how to read it. I'm pushing every button, trying every method, and I can't... Wait a minute.
the back of the literal CD case that the game came in. Kojima, you bastard. So we get in touch with the soldier, who's the colonel's niece, Meryl. It's your eyes. My eyes? They're not soldiers' eyes. And they're rookies' eyes, right? No. They're beautiful, compassionate eyes. Jesus, Snake, can you control yourself? She wants to join the mission, but... You're still too green. I want you to hide somewhere. I'm not green. You're literally green right now. Listen, Meryl. Everybody feels sick the first time they kill someone. You're telling me. I mean, what? I, I've never... Uh, forget that I just... I, I've said too much. Stay the hell out of my way. <laughs> You're a real bastard. Oh, these two are hooking up at the end, aren't they? And there's Mei Ling with a random quote. Then I'm interrupted by a fan who calls himself Deep Throat. This is the weirdest adaptation of all the President's men I've ever seen. You ever have one of those days? Then I meet Vulcan Raven. Snakes don't belong in Alaska. Big fan of this guy. And after a bunch of dodgy grenade throws and getting run over a bunch, I finally take him down. He and I will meet again in battle. But first I have to go to acting class. Snake, like Confucius said, the cautious seldom err. Okay, does she just have a quota day calendar on her desk? Because seriously. In Paradise Lost, Milton wrote, Solitude sometimes is best society. Superior man is modest in his speech, but exceeds in, in his China, action. they say. Rashness brings success Snake. to few. Misfortune, Misfortune to men. Anyway, I also meet tech and military analyst Natasha Romanenko, and they really do encourage smoking in this game, huh? But Snake manages to talk to her without hitting on her once, so that's progress, I guess. I shoot a guy who's just having a pee. Hello, anyone in there? And this section is a real gas! But I make my way out of there, and... Maybe they all died of natural causes? It looks like they were cut by some type of blade. Turns out it's a g g g g g g g ghost We track him down, and yeah, I'd be wetting myself too. But it's not a ghost, just a guy in stealth camouflage with the name Cyborg Ninja, which I think he thinks sounds cooler than it actually does. What's with these guys? It's like one of my Japanese animes. Your pants are covered in pee. So we fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then for all his talk about honor, he goes invisible. But I eventually take him down and... Oh, my two-year-old does that when she's upset. And... bye. Turns out he was a former colleague. Hell of a way to say hi. So now I can finally have a word with Pissy Pants over here. No, I'm not. I always work alone. But with a whole cast of characters available by speed dial. And I just realized this guy kind of looks like me. Fire! I already know that Metal Gear is nothing but a nuclear-equipped walking deathmobile. Snake, don't make me call HR. Turns out this guy helped develop the technology to make Metal Gear, but didn't know that it was, you know, a walking death machine. He explains all this while Snake sits oh so very daintily. My grandfather was part of the Manhattan Project. And my father... He was born on August 6th, 1945. The day of the Hiroshima bomb. So nuclear warfare runs in the family, then. Are you really so surprised this is your fate? If we can't override the launch, we'll have to destroy Rex. Turns out he can help me find Meryl. She had such a cute way of walking. She kind of wiggles her behind. You were really looking. Well, she's got a very cute behind. Jesus, why is everyone in this super not romantic game so horny? Call me Otacon. No thanks. We get a lesson in anime and robotics for... reasons. And then it's time to find Meryl. There's another guy at the same urinal, so I take care of him, and then start eliminating soldiers one by... Snake. Oh, I guess that was Meryl. Good to know. So this time I don't kill Meryl, follow her into the bathroom, and... Where did she go? Don't move. Okay, but seriously, how'd you do that? I had no idea you were so feminine. This is no time to try and hit on me, Snake. Seriously, Snake, this entire mission is a bad time to be hitting on women. Besides, it's a waste of time. When I joined up, they gave me psychotherapy to destroy my interest in men. Yeah, can we talk about that? Because I have a lot of questions about, okay, nope, we're just gonna move on then, ah, alright. I've got no purpose in life, no ultimate goal. Have you tried quilting? I never forget a lady. So, there's something you like about me, huh? Yeah, you've got a great butt. 
<laughs> what? Also, it's this butt we're talking about, right? This is what everyone's so obsessed with? Meryl gives us one of the three card keys needed to override Metal Gear, and we once again tell her she can't come with us. I don't like to waste bullets. Not the way I'm playing, buddy. And then out of nowhere, Meryl reveals that she's doing all of this to follow in her father's footsteps. You know, the reason any woman does anything considered remotely masculine in any piece of media. It's a good thing you hooked up with Meryl. No, I swear, we were just talking. So we're off to... My head! Oh, it hurts! Oh, I get those. Just have some caffeine. Come on, Mr. Foxhound. The commander is waiting. Not suspicious at all. And sure enough... How do you like me? Check yes or no. But turns out she's just under the control of Psycho Mantis, which is my least favorite Black Sabbath song. So I have to repeatedly punch Meryl, which is dumb and I don't like it. And then Psycho Mantis decides to prove his psychic powers. First, he evaluates my progress throughout the game. You're a careless man, aren't you? Mm. You have saved often. You are a prudent person. So I'm careless, but also prudent. Then the game tries to trick me into thinking my TV switched off by... Hideo. Clever and narcissistic. I'm doing almost no damage to Psycho Mantis no matter what I do, so I don't know how to... Don't know how I would have known to do that before, but okay. And it works! Oh, gross. A little tact, Meryl, please. Every living thing on this planet exists to mindlessly pass on their DNA. But you... You are different. Wait, you're saying that Snake is different because he's not horny? Have you listened to anything he said for the last several hours? The first person whose mind I dove into was my father's. There was a lot of porn. We are truly the same, you and I. Oh, we are truly the same, you and I. Bingo! That's cliche bingo. He continues talking for much longer than you'd expect from a dying man, and then... Farewell, weird floaty S&M psychic. The tongues of dying oh my god, this is not the time for Confucius mailing. Read the room. No reason to apologize. Even the greatest masterpiece has its flaws. Tell that to the miseducation of Lauren Hill. How do you know so much? I ride dog sleds. I'm a musher. I'm sorry, since when? So I make my way through this Tomb Raider level to find that Meryl has befriended the cutest little wolf pup. Snake, what's wrong? I thought you were good with dogs. Meryl somehow knows where all the mines are in this place, so I could follow her. Or not. And then... Meryl, get down! Uh, ah! Meryl! Uh. Yes, Meryl gets shot not once, not twice, but thrice. So she does what any dying person in this game does. Talk for several minutes. So now to save her, I have to backtrack, kill the guy at the urinal, get the sniper rifle, you'd think they'd learn not to use this urinal, and make my way back to... where Meryl used to be. So now it's a sniper rifle off, which is super fun with PlayStation 1 controls. And when I say super fun, I mean not fun at all. But I somehow pull it off. Snake, wouldn't now be a good time to save your mission? Well, that's ominous. I get captured and have a chat with Sniper Wolf, who, being shot in the head several times, is very much alive. I am Sniper Wolf, and I always kill what I aim at. Except you didn't kill me, so... Also, can you button up your shirt? <laughs> Ow! Rude! When I wake up, I come face to face with my twin brother Liquid Snake. Family reunion! We're short-handed, so make this little torture show of yours as short as possible. Oh, it's Metal Gear Solid. Nothing is short here. Catch you later, handsome. Once she picks a target, she doesn't think about anything else. Sometimes she even falls in love with them before she kills them. Why am I not surprised? How are you feeling? Not bad. Caught a nice nap on this revolving bed of yours. Too bad I was sleeping alone. Even when hooked up to a torture device, frankly, I'm just impressed. So I go through a little torture, hear about the what project, and wake up in a cell with... Looks like I got a roommate. And I bet he doesn't do the dishes. Fortunately, I can still Skype with my crew. Okay, but you can leave out the Benzedrine. That stuff makes me too frisky. Oh my god. And in the middle of this totally optional dialogue... No. Wait. There was a man who said he was my father. Where is he? Dead. By my own hand. Big Boss. What? Big Boss? I had no idea. Just dropping that plot twist. That's patricide. Yep. You know how you respond to accusations of patricide? 
I need you all to know that I haven't touched the controller for about five minutes now. But we finally finish our chat, the guard gets diarrhea, cause why not? Otokon brings me some ketchup, I use it to play dead, take out the guard, change back into my clothes like I'm a Looney Tunes character, stop at the urinal again, and make my way back to the communications tower. Hey, I remember when that happened. But you can't keep attacking yourself for things that happened in the past. That's what my therapist keeps telling me. I climb the tower in what is easily my least favorite section in the game, make my way to the top, and there goes my direct TV. Hey! Hey, brother. I John McClane off the roof, rappel down the building, meet up with Otacon. I was wondering if even soldiers fall in love. Did you change your pants? I bypass an increasingly absurd number of gun cameras and meet up with my twinsies again. I fire rockets at him and after several minutes finally take him down. Oh, That's not how you make helicopters work, bro. See you in hell, Liquid. That takes care of the cremation. Yes, 10 out of 10. And I'm sure that the main boss of this game is absolutely dead. No matter how far data technology advances, you'll never be able to penetrate the human heart. To which Elon Musk says, challenge accepted. I get on an elevator, but... Look out, Snake! The guys who stole my stealth prototypes are in there with you! Okay, take it down a notch. Sure enough, I fight four invisible soldiers in an elevator. I'd like to see Captain America try something like that. Then I face off against Sniper Wolf again, who brings a sniper rifle to a missile fight. And she looks good for someone who was hit with several missiles. And let me guess, you're going to... I was born on yep, the here we go. This dying monologue really could have been an email. I loved you. Otokan, I don't think you know what love is. And I don't want to show you. Snake! What was she fighting for? War! What is it good for? Absolutely nothing! If we make it through this, I'll tell you. Okay! <laughs> want to try another take of that? So now it's on to... Is the game over? Oh, I see. Time for Act 2. I sneak into the Blast Furnace, get reminded of the Macbeth quote, because you know how elite soldiers have to go through Shakespeare 101, take a freight elevator, and that's not a good sign. And it turns out Naomi, who injected me with the nanobots, might be a spy. Come on, even a high school student could see past it. Also, in the 1950s, the undercover mafia sting operations hadn't even started yet. They first started in 1960. In Chicago, not New York. I think Hideo Kojima overestimates just how much FBI history is taught in American high schools. I make my way to the frozen warehouse and hey, it's the tank guy from earlier. I guess we did meet again. We share many ancestors, you and I. I don't have any crows in my family tree. Have you checked your ancestry DNA results? You know of the world Eskimo Indian Olympics? Yeah, I know it. it must be a real threat in the muck duck eating contest. Yes, you are right. But there is another event that I excel at. It is called the Ear Pool. Sorry, what does this have to do with anything? I set up some claymores to take him down, which leads to the most anticlimactic way of winning a boss fight. And yep, it's dying monologue time. Turns out the DARPA chief was actually a member of Foxhound in disguise, so I guess that's one boss fight I won't be having. Why impersonate the chief? <laughs> That is the end of my hint. Dude, you're dying. Why be so coy? And it's impressive that he's able to keep his cool while being pecked to death. Wait, why are you walking away? I'm still talking. My god, how much of this base's budget went to gun cameras? And there it is. Metal Gear Rex. It always looks smaller in person, doesn't it? I sneak up to the control room where the guy who tortured me and the guy I totally didn't kill have a very convenient conversation about their plans. If we nuke a major population center, the game's over. Literally. From today, call this place Outer Heaven. That's the best name you could come up with? Turns out I didn't need the other two card keys. I had the ability to deactivate the nuclear device this whole time. The world is riding on that key, Snake. Who's that? Damn! Wow, way to go, dummy. So now I have to use a mind detector to find it, like I'm looking for coins at the beach. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Have you ever heard that? It's Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Uh, oh, I don't think too deeply about that one. I'm not sure why I said it. World's hanging in the balance, Mei Ling. Can this wait? So I put in code number one. 
For the second one, I need to freeze the key. Because you know how much computers love when you put frozen things in them. So now I go down to the frozen warehouse and... Just sit. With my thoughts. Oh, actually, this is the perfect time to practice my Duolingo. Tu pasaporte no está en el taxi. Tu pasaporte no está en el taxi. El pasaporte está en tu mano. El pasaporte está en tu mano. Snake, it looks like you changed the card key's shape correctly. Okay, back to it. Second code confirmed, and now for the third code, I have to heat up the card, so time to find the nearest toaster oven. Which in this case means taking the elevator all the way back up to... Snake, have you ever heard of something called Fox Die? No, I tend to hear about things that don't sound dumb. Turns out that's why everyone seems to be dying of heart attacks. They were being injected with nanomachines and... Wait. I was injected with nanomachines. Who knew putting tiny machines in your bloodstream would be deadly? Well, no time to think about imminent death now. I have to get to the blast furnace. I sweat it out for a couple minutes and I have to make sure that the car doesn't cool down so I have to go as fast as I can to... I was found in Rhodesia sometime in the 80s. Uh-huh. Dirty little orphan. E oh, okay. Rhodesia was owned by England Look, Naomi, I don't have a lot of time here, so... I make my way back, put in the third code, and... Detonation code activated. No, why? And that's why you always read the instructions first. Yes, turns out I was tricked, and the guy I thought was my old drill sergeant is actually Liquid Snake, who has Dana Carvey-like impersonation skills. So now it's time once again to fight... Liquid Snake! Did you like my sunglasses? Uh, I guess? Also, can you put on a shirt? From the beginning, the Pentagon was just using you as a vector to spread fox dye. So I was betrayed by the US government? That's it, I'm blaming this whole thing on Ted Cruz. We sort through some daddy issues, and then... It's time for the big fight. I hold off Metal Gear for a bit, and then the character I don't care about that I had one fight with hours ago steps in to help me. We talk for way too long about, I don't know, who cares, while Liquid is being very patient with us, and then he makes one last sacrifice before being played off. So now it's time for round two with the robot that roars like a dinosaur. I hide out under its taint, shoot some missiles at it, and then I defeat Metal Gear. Solid. But of course, Liquid Snake is still alive. You enjoy the killing. That's why. What? Are you denying it? To be fair, Snake, you did kill a bunch of dudes at the same urinal. And of course, he starts monologuing. So they created us from his cells. With a combination of 20th century analog cloning and the super baby method. And I love that these people were just being filmed for stock footage and now they're in a classic video game. I sit through a History Channel documentary before being shown that Meryl has apparently been here the whole time. Don't know how that works, but okay. And on top of that, the Secretary of Defense is going to nuke the place. Which, I guess, makes him a Secretary of Offense? Roy Campbell has been relieved of duty. This is the Secretary of Defense, Jim Houseman. I'm also a community theater actor. You two are an embarrassment from the 1970s. Oh, like Captain Ence Neal. So anyway, back to my fight with Liquid Snake. If you cross this line, you fall. At this height, it will kill even you. Yeah, man, that's how heights work. So then it's a shirtless fight to the death. So long, eh, Bowser? Snake! Yes? I reunite with Meryl, and wow, the chemistry between these two is just so palpable. Probably because they have so much in common, like, um... Well, you know, they're both characters in Metal Gear Solid. Right, yes, we're about to get nuked. Time to get out of here. But not before taking time to change into... my sneaking suit. What is with this game having the worst names for things? Mm, looking good, Snake. Is there something in the water there? What am I missing? I save one last time with Mei Ling. I'm going to miss those proverbs of yours. Will ya though? And then we're off to the races. And I'm sure you could guess this already, but... Not yet, Snake! We take each other on in this precursor to Call of Duty, and then... Somewhere, J.G. Ballard is smiling. We somehow survive and, oh, sure, okay. Seems like nothing's going to... <laughs> but since he's dying, he's going to have a five minute monologue where he... Oh. Well, okay then. The Secretary of Defense is arrested, turns out the nanomachines won't kill me, at least not yet, apparently. I realize I've heard the word snake so many times that it's completely lost its meaning, and Frankie say relax! And then Meryl just starts talking about... 
stuff. Each person is born with their fate written into their own genetic code. No. No, they're not, Meryl. And no joke, this one-way conversation about life and fate and genetics goes on for, like, three minutes. Genes exist to pass down our hopes and dreams for the future through our children. So, do you like movies, or...? And they're in the middle of Alaska. Aren't her arms freezing? They have what this game thinks is romantic banter. We find out Snake's real name is David. And they go off to enjoy life. I give it six months. And they fall through the ice. We end on a sobering message. Wait, was this a nuclear disarmament game the whole time? Because the message got a bit lost. And then, roll credits. Oh no way, Hideo Kojima worked on this? What do you bet the Huntington Beach SWAT team has a poster of this game on their wall? Yeah. I know. So that's the end of the- oh, okay, more stuff, I guess. Oh, is that what I was playing? I thought this was Parappa the Rapper. So now that's the end of the- oh my god. Wait, is that Otacon? Yes, it seems that love-struck, pants-pissing nerd is not who we thought he was. And he seems to be implying that the president is the third child? Are we triplets? So there is a gas snake? The president is gas snake, I'll accept no other explanations. I'm given the code name Iguana, cause, sure. And that's the end of the game? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, well, um... Honestly, I was surprised by this one. The first PlayStation felt like a training ground on how to make 3D games. And for that reason, many of them have not particularly aged well. Let's not forget my playthrough of Tomb Raider. I certainly won't. But the decision to basically make a 2D game and place it in a 3D space was pretty inspired. Like taking Oreos and putting them in mint ice cream. Ben. Jerry. I could kiss you. I rarely felt like I was fighting with the controls, and always having the ability to look ahead helped immensely. Most surprisingly, the difficulty curve was fair. I was expecting a lot of game overs, and I got them. Oh, how I got them. But I rarely felt that are you kidding me kind of frustration that comes with more difficult games. More often than not, I had to rely on problem solving or pattern recognition as opposed to skillful button mashing. I also super appreciated that when you come back to the game after turning it off, you can read a mission log that helps remind you of where to go next. To stop the terrorist's nuclear attack, one must deactivate the detonation code. Oh, must one? And for 1998, the game works visually. Characters are unique, the base has multiple distinct areas that all still feel like they'd be part of a military base, and of course, that Hideo Kojima cinematic style is always fun to watch. He clearly loves- Okay. I am so sorry, but I'm about to use a phrase that obnoxious film geeks use, just giving you full warning. Okay, ready? Here we go. He clearly loves maison scene, so he fills his cutscenes with lyrical camera work and unique cinematic touches, keeping the world just a little bit weird in order to build tension or heighten suspense or just land an emotional moment. He also clearly has a lot of pride in his cast of voice actors, giving each one full credit at the character introductions, which I'd love to see in more games, honestly. Great care really seems to have been taken in all aspects of this game's storytelling. Which is interesting, because... Okay, so, uh, there's just, there's a lot to unpack here. But the long and the short of it is that this seems to be the vision of a guy who clearly has a love of 80s action movies. The weirder, the better. I'm talking Robocop Total Recall territory. Solid Snake is absolutely the kind of role that Stallone would have written for himself 30, 40 years ago. The scowling, one-man army who, despite having no charm or charisma, manages to be the desire of every single woman he meets. Even somehow overriding the man-hating psychotherapy of the spunky woman several years his junior who serves as his sidekick. Here's a world where shirts are optional, cameras linger on bodies, nerds are little wusses who wet themselves, and everyone, no matter what side of the conflict they're on, everyone is horny for each other. It's media serving as wish fulfillment, and Solid Snake fulfills some very specific wishes for some very specific demographics. It's this Reagan-era view of American exceptionalism, which is a swagger and a vibe that may have still worked in the late 90s, but is slowly being dissected to the point of just feeling old and sad. Speaking of politics, this game has some, and it's weird. You remember the end of The Other Guys? Probably not, because you probably didn't see it, so at the end of The Other Guys, Adam McKay has this closing credit sequence where he talks about Ponzi schemes and bailouts and pay disparity. It's all super informative and kinda has to do with the movie, but only kinda, and also this was a comedy with Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg, so what are we doing? That's how I felt with Metal Gear Solid. The game seems to want me to take away this message of our world's failed promises of nuclear disarmament, but that lies directly in contrast with everything that came before. 
You want to sell me on disarming nuclear devices right after showing me this badass nuclear missile robot dinosaur. You're asking me to believe in world peace after having me spend 11 hours being this tough, sexy killing machine. And especially spending the last several minutes talking about choosing life and defying fate and none of that has literally anything to do with the game. Now to use the example of the other guys, that credit sequence ushered in a new kind of Adam McKay, the guy who made the big short and Vice and Don't Look Up, and so maybe later Metal Gear entries managed to find that balance, either sprinkling the message throughout the story rather than dumping it on us at the very end, or just doing away with the message altogether. But here, trying to do both felt arbitrary and out of place amongst the dick-swinging, butt-wiggling pew-pewness of it all. With each cutscene, I found myself disengaging further from the story, rolling my eyes and cracking jokes rather than caring about any of these people. And when those cutscenes are each 5 to 10 minutes long, that's a lot of time sitting around asking, when am I going to get to do something? And when I'm asking for less narrative in a game, that's a sign. So, lots to like, lots to dislike, which means... Metal Gear Solid gave me similar vibes to Call of Duty 4. Stunning design, problematic story. To be fair, it's a lot less of a contrast than Call of Duty, and I'd actually be interested in playing through this franchise. But it's more to see just how weirder these games get than a desperate need to find out what happens. Still, a title this unique and bizarre managed to strike a chord with so many gamers and is still very playable in 2022. That ain't nothing. So now that I've played through a game where an iconic one-man army murders his way to victory, what's next on the docket? Perfect. You know what Brianne Shaw and Haley's mom have in common? Well, probably a lot, but mainly they're supporters of my Patreon. So much so that I say their names at the end of each episode. Do you want that? Or the ability to see these episodes one week early? Or the ability to vote for future episodes? Then sign up! Otherwise, feel free to like and subscribe and click on that notification bell. I'm jumping back into the world of RPGs for my next episode, so it may take a little while until you see that one. We'll see how that goes. But until then, thank you so much for watching.